Uh, okay, so we're going to try to show you how to use Blender to make a pretty quick first-person shooter level. Um, okay, so I'm using Mac, but it's going to be the same on Windows. So I'm going to open Blender here, and it's going to come up with the uh, default project settings. So I'm just going to hit A to select all, and then X to delete. Um, I'm going to hit 7 on the keypad, and that just makes it so that the camera is looking straight down. I'm also going to push 5 to extend the orthogonal view, because without that, we just have this tiny little um, XY coordinate system, and I want a great big one, so push 5 to extend the orthogonal view. Uh, I want to create something, so I'm going to make sure that I'm in object mode right down here. Like the da -da -da right there. I'm going to go to create. Uh, I'm going to create a new cube, and now I want to resize this. By default, if you're importing this into Unity, it's going to be 2 meters by 2 meters, or 2 Unity units by 2 Unity units by 2 Unity units. I want this to be much bigger than that, because I want it to be like the floor plan for a level. So I'm going to uh, hit S for size, and X for the X axis, and then type 100 and it's going to scale to 100 on the x-axis. And you can see that over here where it says vector. It says x is 100. Um, this is still selected because you have this orange boundary around it. I'm going to hit S for, si or for scale, Y for the y-axis, and 100 on Y. And hit Enter. Um, I'm going to use my mouse wheel to zoom out. Uh, if I use the center mouse button, I'm just going to press it in. I can kind of rotate this in three dimensions. You can see this is kind of like this big flat surface. So if I hit 7 again, I'm looking straight down on it. Okay, so I want to make some edits to this. So I'm going to go to edit mode. And then I want to section this off so that it's like essentially just like almost like a maze. Because um, that's kind of the easiest way to start out. We can make a more complicated one later. If you guys come up with like an actual map you want to do, we can discuss how we can do that. But for now, let's just talk about how we can make a maze. So on your keyboard, press Control R, and then this creates this sectioning tool. If I move over here, it's going to ask me if I want to section it horizontally. If I move up here, it's going to ask me if I want to section it vertically. So I'm going to move over here. I'm going to type in 29. So I didn't click or anything. I just moved it over. I typed in 29. Now if I click, I can move them up and down so that they can be offset. But if I hit Escape, by default, then they're set kind of where they're supposed to be. I'm going to press A to unselect what was selected. Now I'm going to section vertically in the same way. So I'm going to do Control R, uh, 29, hit Enter, and Escape. And then A so that I'm not selecting those anymore. And now what I've done is I've created this sectioned, and it's sectioned on both sides. Now what I want to do is I want to grab some of those faces, and it's called extruding, kind of like pull them. I want to grab some of those faces and pull them up to make that like maze. So down here in my tool place, is this big, there we go. Down here in my tool place, right now I'm on vertex select. I can go to edge select. I want to go to face select, because I want to select these by faces, and then grab the faces and pull those up. So, in order to grab more than one face at a time, I'm going to press the B button, uh, which allows me to do what's called a box select. So I'm going to box select on this, I'm going to press B again, I'm going to box select on here, and I'm just grabbing the targets that are kind of on the center of the face. I'm going to press B again, I'm going to grab these targets here, and one more time, and I'm going to grab these targets up here. I'm grabbing kind of the edges of the arena here. I'm going to press E to extrude, and then I'm going to extrude this by a factor of 10, and then hit enter. Now what that does is it makes it so that these are 10 uh, unit units, which is 2 meters or 10 meters. Um, anyway, it makes it so it's tall enough so that our character can't necessarily just jump out unless we've you know, give them like a super jumping power up or something. So we've created this beginning to our level. So I'm going to press 7 to go to overhead again. 
Now everything's currently selected orange, so if I push A, I'm not selected anymore. I can still rotate around seven, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick some of these faces inside and I'm gonna use those to make like a maze. So box select and I'll grab these. Now my edges were pulled up 10. So these little bits and pieces I'm gonna select, I'm gonna pull these up a smaller amount. You can do yours however you want to. So I'm just box selecting here, just to give this, break up the space, um, however you want to. If you want to make like a room, you could, one way that you could do it is grab some of these, grab those, and maybe grab these, and now you've got a room that you could put, I don't know, stuff in there, spawn point or something. Um, here I'm going to grab these, I'm going to grab a bunch of these in kind of a weird shape. Like that. Maybe I'll do this too, to make kind of this like, I don't know, place there. And then I'll do this. But there's another weird little section there, here. And then... I will kind of just make a couple floating spaces in here. Okay, I'm gonna hit E to extrude. I extruded my walls by a factor of 10. I'm gonna extrude these by a factor of eight and hit enter. And I hit A just to unselect them. Now if I go like this, you can see I've made my level. Now there's not a whole lot going on up there, so I don't know fix that up here. So I'm going to box select, choose some of these, Oops. box select, box select, there we go. And I'll extrude that and then press A to unselect them. Okay. You can choose to have these different heights and stuff, um, however you want to do it. I don't have a whole lot going on in there, but maybe that's what I want. Maybe I want to have a big open area. Um, okay. So I'm going to do a couple things here. Uh, just to make it look neat, uh, I'm going to go to object mode. And you can see that kind of what it's going to look like. I'm not going to add like a texture to this in Unity to make it look, I don't know, like whatever I want it to look like. Yeah. But I'd have to do something called UV mapping. Um, which we'll cover in another video here pretty quickly. Because um, I do have some textures that you guys can use if you want to. Some of them are pretty cool. Um, anyway, so here we go. We've got this. And then uh, I'm going to go over here, over on this side over here. Get my mouse bigger. Do it. There we go. On this side over here, I'm going to click Tools, Add Modifier. Now, this is just something I thought looked cool. I'm going to hit Smooth and it kind of makes the edges all smooth. You can change the factor of this. So like you can make the factor way bigger or way smaller. So it starts off at 0.5 and if you don't want them to be quite that smooth, you can go like 0.4. It's not quite at that smooth. So I don't know, I think it just adds a little bit of visual interest um, like I said, if you want to, you can kind of deform it some more. It just makes it look a little less, I don't know, holiday e, but you don't have to do this by any means. Um, okay, so now we want to save this to our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File, I'm going to go to Save As. Um, I'm going to find where my Unity project is saved. So right now my Unity project is saved at users, user, desktop, and it's particle scripting. And then inside particle scripting, it's under assets, particle splatter. And then um, I made a new folder. So to make a new folder, you click this button up here, create a new directory. 
I called it models for 3D models that I'm making in Blender. Then go in here. Um, and then inside models, like because we might make models for other things. We might make models for, I don't know, enemies and stuff because Blender's kind of cool. Um, so inside here we have levels and yeah, levels. And then I want to call this um, maze. So I'm going to call it maze.blend. And then um, I'm going to hit save as blender file. Now, if you go to Unity, which I will in a second here. There we go. Um, this is one that I was playing around with earlier. But if you go to Unity, go to Models, Levels, here's the maze file I built, or the maze uh, level I built. Now if I... I'm just gonna take this. So this is something I was messing around with earlier just to make sure it worked the way I wanted it to. So I'm gonna grab this maze, I'm gonna pull it out. Holy cow, it's way big. So much bigger than I thought it would be. Um, but that's okay, it's good. So there we go. It's right there. Um, I'm actually gonna set its y-coordinate to be zero. Oh, okay, well that's not as bad as I thought. It's just that my camera was way the heck up there. And so it went as high as my camera was. Okay, good to know. So um, I'm gonna grab my first person controller. I'm gonna pull it over into my new level. Maybe. There we go. So he's looking, or it, I don't know, it's non-gendered. It's 2017, I shouldn't be assuming the gender of my first person controller. So I'm kind of jumping in here. Um, one thing that you want to do is make sure that your uh, maze has a uh, mesh on it, or a collider on it. Because right now, if I hit play, you know, little dude's going to fall right through the world. And the reason that happens is because this uh, Blender file has no collider on it by default. Now you can fix that by going over here to Maze and click Generate Colliders and then click Apply. And it will automatically generate a collider on it. So now if I go over to Maze, now you see it has a mesh collider attached to it. I could also have done that just by going down to Add Component and um, typing in Collider and then finding a Mesh Collider. Um, because this is like a 3D object, uh, a Mesh Collider just kind of like, I don't know, imagine it like Saran Wrap. <laughs> like it just kind of shrink wraps onto the surface and it generates a Collider that way. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my layer here to Environment so that when I hit Play, doo -doo -doo. so there's our little dude. And the reason I switched it to environment is so that paint splatters come up like they're supposed to. If I didn't switch it to environment, no paint splatters. So now this is a pretty dull environment right now. Um, there's no, no texture work. Right now it's just like a boring scene. So we're gonna do something about the textures next time when we talk about something called UV mapping. Um, and then I have some textures that you can use if you want to. Completely up to you. And then uh, later after that, we'll add some enemies here so that you can have some stuff to play paintball with. So for now, though, uh, that's what we're going to do. Oh, yeah, and one thing, too. So Blender knows where that file is. So now if you go back in here and you make any changes to this, so like let's say I go into, make sure I'm out of plane. Yeah, OK, cool. So let's say I go back in here. And um, I go into edit mode, and I decide. Let's see, I think my character's down here. Um, I decide I want to grab a few of these. Yeah, something weird like that. Sure. I'm gonna extrude them 15. I'm gonna make a great big tower, kind of in the middle of everything. And hit enter. Go back to object mode. It's gonna be this weird looking tower. 
I'm going to go up to File and Save. And when I go back into Unity, there's that tower. See, it popped right in. So, let me just show you. Yeah, see, there it is, right there. So, Blender and Unity uh, interact with each other pretty well. So, you can make changes to your Blender file, and it will import automatically to Unity, which I think is pretty, pretty neato. Uh, yeah. So next time we'll talk about UV mapping so that you can add some textures to this so that it won't look like just a blank old white world. And then we'll go from there. So 